So we want to consider now division and matrix division in the matrix algebra. Okay, this is the inverse of a matrix, is what it's called. And we can see how this can help us solve the matrix equation and as such. This is the framework for um, solving um, linear systems of equations. So this is the framework for that. <clears throat> So the inverse of a matrix, okay, I have to give you a matrix A, and the inverse is A to the minus 1. Okay, it's just notation. It, it, it doesn't mean anything particular. You'll see where it comes from. And it has to satisfy these two relationships. Remember, um, matrix multiplying on the left doesn't, isn't the same as the right. Now, the I here, that's an I, is the matrix version of 1, okay? So for a one by one matrix, it would just look like this. For two by two matrices, it would look like this. For three by three matrices, it would look like this. Notice this is what we got when we were doing Gauss-Jordan elimination. This is the kind of pattern we were looking for. Okay, so that's the matrix version of one. Okay, so why do I have the two? Well, because again, oh, no, I'm gonna talk about what the notation means. Think about what we have in real numbers. So you, if you have, 2, the inverse of 2, so the equivalent, would be 1 half, right? Because 2 times 1 half is 1, right? And the same over here. 1 half times 2 is 1, okay? So where does the notation come from? Well, I guess you could write 1 over a, but we don't. We write it as c. 1 half is 2 to the minus 1 power, right? So it's 2 times 2 to the minus 1 power equals 1. And the same here, 2 times to the minus one power times two. And the reason we need both relationships is because, as I kind of said earlier, uh, A times B does not equal B times A for matrices. Okay, so you need both sides. You have to do it both ways. All right, so that's where these, this notation comes from. Um, that's where the notation comes from, and that's why we have these two relationships. Okay. So again, whether you multiply on the left or the right matters doesn't for real numbers, but real numbers are very special. So here's, I'm just going to look at a two by two, and here's a matrix, and I want to determine its inverse. Okay, I just picked a two by two because it'll just make the computations a little easier. But it's just basically going to be Gauss, Jordan, like all over again. So what we do is we start off with the matrix A, and on the right-hand side, what we had before was right, the, the, the right-hand side of the, the equations, a vector. So I'm just going to augment the matrix A with the identity, with the matrix 1. So the A is going to be given, and I'm just going to augment it by uh, the um, matrix version of 1. And I'm going to do Gauss-Jordan, same as we did before, exactly the same as we did before. That's why I introduced it that way, because it's going to just fit perfectly here. And what we get out of it, notice on the left side, we'd get that 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, then we'd go 0, the rest. Uh, and what's all going to be on the right-hand side is going to be the inverse. So doing Gauss-Jordan is actually, the way we learned it, is just a special case of this. And so we'll have the matrix 1 and the inverse matrix. So that's the process. So let's start, okay? Here's A augmented by the 1 and see what I have down here. That's the A, and that's the, the matrix version of 1, okay? And we're just going to do, um, and before we only had the 1 column, now we have the 2. Now we're going to do this exactly using the same format as we did before, exactly the same. So I have this minus 2, and I need to get a 1 there. So I'm going to use the 3, Right? I'm going to use the 3 to get us there. So this is the basic uh, detour that I talked about prior. We're going to take, change the first equation, minus 1, times the second equation, plus the first. Notice the only thing that's different is you're going to have two columns to the right instead of one. So I'm going to have these two columns now to the right. So I just take everything in the first well, I'm going to multiply everything here by minus 1. Everything here by minus... Oh, no, I'm just taking the minus... E1 is the same. E1 is the same. So I'm just taking everything here right over here. And I'm going to take minus 1 times E2. 
So I'm just going to take a minus 1 times everything here and bring it over. And I'm going to just do the columns exactly the same as we did before. And it works, it works exactly the same. Okay? And I just put that over here. So I just replace the, the first equation. Okay? And now I need to get rid of the 3 down there. So see if you can do it. See if you can do it. Okay? So you see 3 is the target, 1 is the pivot, so I'm going to have replaced the second equation by 3 times the first equation plus the second equation, right? So I'm going to multiply everything in the first equation by 3, right? Just bring over the second equation, add them together, and then wind up replacing the second equation. So pause and take a look at this. Okay, and if we had a third row, I mean, if we had a three by three matrix, we just continue in the same familiar pattern. I have a one here ready, so I don't have to worry about it. So what do I do next? Okay, I'm targeting the minus one. So I'm going to replace the first equation by one times the second equation plus the first equation. And there's the calculation here. Again, if, same as Gauss-Jordan, exactly the same as we did before, only we have more columns on the right now. And that's it. Look what we have. We have the one, matrix one on the left, and now on the right we have the inverse. So the inverse, we started out with A augmented by the matrix one, and now we did Gauss-Jordan, and now we have the matrix one augmented with the inverse. So that's the inverse right there. So that's fine, it's nice, it works well. Mages, Gauss, Jordan, and of course it's a lot of algebra in there. And what I encourage you to do is check, because on this example, in fact, I made an algebra mistake. So check. So you have to check both sides, both ways, right? It's possible one way works, but the other doesn't. So if I plug in A, an A inverse, if you actually do the calculation, and you should be able to, we did this last matrix multiplication, you should get this. And if you do it the other way, right, that's why I have the A inverse times A and do it, it works as well. So I'm good to go. Again, there's a lot of places in this course you can check your answers. All right, try and match that so I know I have the correct answer. Now, this is why this was all developed, right? When solving, let me just, solving linear equations is, is very important. It's very, very important in applications. So the point is I can't deal with every single equation differently. I want one, one framework to handle this. The computer code can handle this. Um, so I want to write this linear system of equations as a matrix equation, and then I'll just I have software that'll do this and, and it'll do it. I don't want to have to worry about the particulars. So I want to write this as a matrix equation first, and we did that last, last lecture. Find the inverse and then this will be the solution, and I'll explain where this comes from. See, then I can just calculate the solution. All right, so first step, let's look at the matrix equation. And that's it. Notice a is just the, the data, just as we did before with Gauss. That's just the data. That's my A. You have X, Y, they're your variables. X, Y are your variables. So I put them in this vector, this column vector called X. And B is just this, your right-hand side. So you notice what we did before with Gauss, Jordan, is we really just did a shorthand version of this. I mean, that's really what Gauss-Jordan did what we learned prior. Um, it's just the shorthand version of what we're doing here. So that's my matrix A. That's my solution, X. It's a vector. It's a column vector. And that's my uh, right-hand side, B. Okay. Now, if I want to find the matrix inverse, Right? I, we, we do what we did before. There's your matrix A. So it's inverse. We did this in the other example. That would go here. Okay, I did it. I did it in the other example. 
But all that, that would go here. That's what we did. We, we, we obtained this from the other example. And now this is the solution. That's how I calculate my solution. Once I had the inverse, I mean, this is a nice clean calculation. Once I had the inverse and I had B, I write it out, plug the inverse in, plug B in, and do your matrix multiplication, and you get that for your solution. That's your matrix. That's your solution. And of course, we can check. That says x equals 1, y is 2, and you can check by plucking them back in here and seeing if that's correct. And there it is. And that's why you develop this notation, because it's just one form works for all, all systems of linear systems of equations are this form. And we can handle it with Gauss-Jordan. That's the idea. Now, where does this notation come from? Well, as I said before, where did we get the inverse notation from? We looked at 2 times 1 half equals 1, right? Well, this is going to be the same thing. So let's compare these two. If I have ax equals b, that's the same as saying, let's say, 2x equals 4, right? So how do I solve this? I take the inverse, I divide by 2, which is taking the inverse, right? That's the inverse. I do that on both sides. Now remember, whether you multiply on the left or the right matters for matrices. So I'm multiplying on the left. I do exactly the same here, right? You see, it's exactly the same. Now, two, the inverse of 2 times 2, 1 half times 2 is 1. Well, it's the same here. That's what our definition of the inverse was. A inverse times A is the matrix version of 1. Now you see 1 times x is x. And the identity with the matrix 1 times x is x. And that's where that comes from. And then we have the, the multiplication on the right-hand side. So that's where the notation, that's where it comes from. That's how, um, you don't have to re-derive it. You can just, you know, know the formula. The solution is A inverse times B. That's fine too, but that's where it comes from. Okay, now here's an example. And you can jump in and see if you can determine the inverse. But there's a caveat here, so we'll see what happens. Okay, pause and give it a shot. Okay, let me go down. I'm just putting in all the work. All the work. And what, look what I get. I get one. Now, I don't care about the junk. Don't worry that the fractions are awful. I don't really care. I mean, I don't. None of that really matters. All that really matters here is notice I get zero, zero, zero. So this would be a contradiction. This would be zero equals one or zero equals zero. Either way, this tells you the inverse doesn't exist. I can't go any further without calculation. I can't finish it. There's no way that'll finish. And so when you get anything happening, like a, a row of all zeros anywhere, it tells you that the inverse does not exist. So just like you can't always divide, right? You can't always divide by zero, right? You can't always, this is matrix division. You can't always find the inverse, right? So this is the equivalent of dividing by zero. Okay, the, the, the inverse doesn't exist. Okay. So what should you get out of this, this section? You should, if I give you a matrix, you should be able to compute its inverse. Or if I give you a system of linear, linear system of equations, right, or a system of linear equations, you should be able to solve it by writing it as a matrix equation, finding A inverse, right, and then saying X equals A inverse B. So those are, that's what you have to be able to do uh, from this section, all right? So you need the inverse matrix to do this. Okay, so good luck with those. Give them a shot.